Hi, this is Piotr Walczyszyn, Adobe Creative Cloud Evangelist. So today I wanted to show you how you can make uh, edge animate animations, so pure HTML5 animations, work inside of a DPS magazine, so a, a magazine built with InDesign and published into a DPS, which can work uh, either on Android or iOS devices. Uh, all right, so first of all, uh, I want to show you, you know, how you can interact from an edge animation or edge animate animation uh, and um, let's say change a page inside of a single article of, uh, of a DPS magazine. So let me first uh, show you uh, how it will actually look what we want to build. So let's bring back here my iPad screen and I'll show, I'll run Adobe Viewer which allows me to test my animation or test my magazines before they actually go live and I already have here one that has the animation that I want to work on today. Uh, so it's very nice beautiful animation and it shows you you know this nice sort of a spinning effect and this is old HTML built with animate. It, that may not look really smooth because this is you know streamed over Earth server so trust me on my iPad this looks beautiful and smooth. Here on the recording it may not but well uh, I cannot help with that. Now I want to show you because this was nice sort of a cover and nice interactive cover of my magazine. Now, how do I, you know, like navigate from that cover of my magazine to a certain pages? So if I tap of any of those ladies, you can see, which you can see in the center of the screen, you'll see that, you know, it actually navigates to a certain page of my magazine. Of course, I can, you know, uh, navigate through my magazine just by, you know, the standard, you know, swipes on my device. But let's go back to the uh, cover here. If I tap maybe on the third look, you'll see it uh, navigates to the third look of my magazine. So that was, you know, beautiful animation and a very simple, you know, navigation between uh, pages of a cer cer single article. Um, so now let's get back uh, to animate and see how this can be built. So let's minimize this and bring our animate tool. So already I, I, you know, I have the almost complete animation. What is missing? Uh, it's missing the top navigation of the titles. And I have those elements that I want to animate. I already have those imported into my project as PNG files. So I can drag and drop first the Alice Ritter here and spring element here. So I got those two. I can also select those two and make those available at some point of my stage. So let me go back here and on the timeline I just place my playhead at the place where I want those two elements to start to being visible. Before the, that certain point on the timeline, I don't need those elements. I don't need them to occupy my space or take you know, use my memory of my device. So what I can do here, I can select this point on the timeline and I make this those selected elements on from that point in time. So you can see it's just dashed here and it's not available. Now what I want to do, and just clean up here a little bit one thing, what I want to do, I want to turn on the pin tool so that I double click on the playhead and I slide my playhead to a place uh, where I wanted my animation to finish and it just selected a certain range where I want to animate my uh, HTML elements on my stage. So let's start with the first one here on the left, uh, Alice L Ritter uh, icon here. And with holding a shift key so it doesn't, you know, move uh, vertically, just horizontally, I just want to place it here. And you can see it has created this bar, this transition from left to right for that selected element. Let's repeat that same thing for uh, the spring label here. And let's Put it just snap it here so you can see it automatically created inside of that selected range with a pin and the playhead uh, those transitions now I want to what I want to do I want to make those two transitions from uh, have a, additional bouncing effect when they slide in so it's actually an easing and it's ease out what I want to do because I wanted it to be at the end of my animation so I just select bounce so if I play it now you can see it nicely slides in and bounces 
And now, last thing I want to do before I jump in, into the InDesign, I want to show you here at the end of my animation, I edit this trigger and trigger is a, a snippet of JavaScript code that can do certain things. And in my case, at this very end is I want to turn those, you know, pure HTML elements here, which I have on stage, those three ladies uh, here. Uh, I want to turn those into a button that can be clicked and it can navigate to a certain page of my um, DPS magazine. So if I click on my uh, trigger here, it will pop up this JavaScript code that I added. So you can see there are six lines of code. Uh, those, those first two are for a DPS navigation element one, which is actually here on my timeline. Mm. DPS navigation one, which is actually this first lady and so on for the second and third. And what I do here, I first of all, uh, use a API JavaScript API that comes with uh, animate to look up. So sort of a return this element to me and I wrap it with a jQuery and function and just for ease of use and append into that element an anchor element HTML element that has a style display block width and height set to 100% so it fully fills in the full content of my DPS navigation element and the trick here is that you know uh, uh, the link that it points to starts with this, this nav to a protocol which is understood by DPS magazine so it knows that it has to navigate to and the first thing uh, uh, you specify is the name of your article that you want to navigate to. So inside of a single folio, you can navigate to different articles or and this after the hash sign is the page number starting from a zero page. So zero is the first page and so on. So in this case, it will jump to actually a third page, which has this uh, look one um, page. And you can see the same thing I repeat for nav2, uh, sorry, the DPS navigation2 element and DPS navigation3 element. So they are filled in with those uh, with those uh, anchor elements. Now, if I just test it in the browser, here you can see uh, it should, first of all, spin in those uh, dresses. And here you can see my title also slided in. And you can see that when I uh, hover over those elements. Uh, Chrome here in the bottom left corner shows me, you know, that where it will navigate so I can check it will work proper, properly inside of a DPS magazine. So last thing here in Animate, I want to publish. So let's go to publish settings, not for web in this case, I want to publish for Animate deployment package. So you can specify the path and the file name that it will actually use and just publish it. So I just publish those two. And now uh, let me go into wherever I have my InDesign document um, and it should be somewhere over here. There we go. So I launched it here and you can see that my first page of my magazine here is actually empty. So other pages are, you know, filled and ready to use. The first one is empty. It's waiting for my animation. So I go to file place and I point to the OEM file that we just published from Animate. I open it and let's put it in the upper left corner somewhere over here. So it ju we just placed it here. Now I can go into a folio overlays so I can set it to auto play. So when the you know, page with my animation is displayed, it starts playing. That's the you know, uh, thing I want to set in a folio overlays and you can find, you know, folio overlays and folio builder, which will go next to in the window here and you can turn those here. So now if you go to a folio builder, uh, the last point here and let me delete that so you can see, you know, from scratch how I do it. So first of, I create new folio. So it's like a set of articles and I give it some names. So let's give it name lookbook. Uh, okay, now in my case, it's only available for the landscape mode and for iPad JPEG is the good format and I press OK. Now it allows me to create a new article inside of that folio. So I want to create a new article based on my InDesign currently open InDesign document. There we go. And here important thing for navigation to work inside of here in, in this case, also, the article name has to be lookbook. Remember when I showed you in Animate, this was this nav to article name and then maybe the page number. So lookbook 
this has to match the nav2 part. So I can now save. And let's, in the meantime, let me bring my, my iPad. Okay. Let's go to Adobe Content Viewer. And now, well, let's make this guy a little bit bigger so we see what's happening. Let's get out of here. So if I go here uh, and switch back here, I will have a preview. And in the preview options, you know, when your iPad is connected with a cable to your computer, you should see it here also. also oh, and there is also a Adobe Content Viewer that can run on the desktop, but that's not fun in this case. And also the nav to links only work inside when you actually launch it on a device, not on a, uh, on desktop. So that's one thing to remember. So you see here, I just place this uh, beautiful animation. Let's go full screen here. And now if I tap on the first look, it jumped to the first uh, uh, look of on my uh, iPad. And we go back and if I repeat that for a second or third, it will navigate to the pages of this magazine. Uh, and of course, you know, as I mentioned, you know, you can navigate either in the same magazine or the same article of folio, or you can navigate also between different article articles of the same folio. Just, you know, you have to put the proper name uh, in after the nav to, um, uh, protocol inside of an anchor element in uh, in your uh, animate animation. Okay, so that was a very quick intro of interaction and integration between animate and uh, DPS magazines. Thank you very much and stay tuned for more. Bye.